Today, let's take a field trip and touch some grass in the woods. It's all set up to be cozy, stars twinkling, marshmallows toasting by the fire, but we're down to the last few embers on the campfire. Now, common sense kicks in. If we don't add new sticks, branches, or logs, those embers will fade faster than my New Year's resolutions. But wouldn't it be nice if we could just rewrite some of those fundamental laws of nature? Well, if you're a tech giant working on AI, that is essentially the goal. Just just like our campfire, artificial intelligence models can't keep burning bright if they're only ever fed their own glowing embers. This phenomenon, fittingly named model collapse, or if you're feeling dramatic model autophagy disorder, and yes, that's literally AI eating itself just like an Ouroboros. This happens when AI systems keep learning from their own outputs instead of receiving fresh inputs. Now I want to start off by being really clear. As we've discussed in prior videos, the industry loves to slap new terms on old labels to make them sound shiny and interesting. You might find some variations on what your specific institution labels as model collapse or the behaviors that lead to it. This is normal. Remember, we're dealing with emerging technology here, and that means we've got to be willing to be a little loosey-goosey to leave room for growth and corrections. Before we can get into why big tech is trying to overpower this problem, even though there are solutions out there, we have to break down what causes a model to collapse. You start off with a shiny new AI model. It's been trained on human-made data, books, articles, tweets, and everything but the kitchen sink. These different training sessions help it learn the difference between fiction, fact, harmful and acceptable responses, and all the other things you'd kind of expect. That information is conveyed in numbers, including some specialty information that developers might slip in themselves. What you end up with is billions of knobs and dials that become the model parameters, which is just a technical way of defining all of those different things the model has learned during its initial training. At first, your model performs really well. It does a fantastic job of spitting out helpful information. But imagine you decide to retrain this model. Instead of feeding it fresh data straight from humans, you give it its own outputs, where the AI is now learning from content it created previously. It then begins to simplify and condense the complexities of the real world. It starts focusing too heavily on what it already knows, forgetting the diverse details that made its original training data so rich and useful. Leaving our campfire for just a moment, if we head back inside, we can see it's kind of like this closet I keep shoving old bed linens into. We can do things to fold, compact, maybe even vacuum seal things to make the most out of every inch, but there's still a finite amount of space we've got to work with and things can get lost in all of that. To add a little bit of nuance to this, it's hard to actually say how this decline in LLMs happens behind the scenes as a matter of confirmed fact by providers. Because the biggest models that this declination problem applies to are about as transparent as my thoughts on any given 420. The real issue is that each generation of retraining amplifies this problem. Early on, things may seem fine, perhaps just a minor slip up here and there, but by the third, fifth, or ninth generation, the AI outputs start to feel far less coherent. This is the point where the closet is starting to overflow. Whenever we open it, the problem is apparent and getting a favorite blanket out of the thing is going to be an absolute chore. To be clear, this isn't just a little glitch. This phenomenon is baked into the system design. You can see this in many different AI projects, not just the big ones, and we've been keenly tracking it for years. One of the best examples came out of a study using AI to detect possibly cancerous moles when presented with just an image. Over time, the model went from high performance scores to numbers that left the researchers looking under the hood for problems. Turns out that the system saw a shortcut just by figuring out that pictures with rulers were more likely to contain cancerous moles, and thus any picture with with a ruler got the check mark. The problem came from this post-process fine-tuning or retraining stage which attempted to squeeze too much into the closet. The AI simply started picking out the first thing that looked right as a result. Thanks to the booming popularity of generative AI, a significant portion of online content is now AI generated. Websites, blogs, even certain social media feeds are increasingly populated with content crafted by algorithms. 
This means new AI models trained on recent internet data risk ingesting more and more of their predecessors' outputs, unintentionally trapping them in this dreaded self-cannibalization cycle. This is also where feeding AI-generated data to an AI system might matter the most. Whenever a developer takes your data and feeds it back into the model for training, we know this as RLHF. That's Reinforced Learning from Human Feedback, though some earlier communities reference this as real-life haptic feedback. RLHF, like so many things in big tech, doesn't happen on any transparent basis. Some systems curate this data from human feedback scores. Think about the thumbs up or thumbs down rating systems on some chatbot sites. Others might use both your inputs and the system's outputs as part of their RLHF system, mixing synthetic and human data into model updates. These are all used to help filter out the most appropriate data for training by whatever standard a company is currently setting. It could be that these cycles happen every week, every month, or maybe they just happen depending on the overall amount of interaction made with that specific model. Every time this data is fed back into the system, we're opening up the closet once again and hoping to still find a stack of blankets instead of a mess on the floor. So we know why, and for the most part, how model collapse happens, but how exactly do we stop it? Well, in the world of AI, the answer is most often the simplest. Just add more stuff. Enter the world of scaling models, a fancy way of saying just make them bigger. Researchers realized something months ago. The solution to preventing our beloved models from turning into gibberish spewing machines might just be to supersize their brain power. One of the ways this has been considered is through expanding model parameters instead of the fixed ones the industry uses now. In short, this is the ability to fold in new data that doesn't call for compression, and that means that a system can escape the spiral to collapse, or at least put off the final crash out for a little bit longer. Yeah, not entirely glamorous, I know. The reality is, as far as we know it, that this all just sort of pushes off the model decline. Which, don't get me wrong, that is great. It is progress and tracks with what we'd want to see out of AI when we apply something like Moore's Law to it, which is the power of doubling in advancements to simplify things a little bit. Basically, if you make things a little less bad every time, eventually you'll hit a tipping point and things will start to get a little bit better every time you make something. Model collapse and model decline will be with us until we hit that tipping point. So why is bigger actually better here? When you dramatically increase the number of parameters in an AI model, you're effectively giving it more mental space to handle complexities. Basically, we take that tiny closet and we renovate it. The ability for us to expand on this closet, specialize it, and maybe even convert it into a whole other room depending on our needs, that's the power of expanding parameters. This space is critical because it helps models avoid collapsing under their own outputs and attempts to improve them on their own data. A big reason why smaller or mid-sized models suffer from MAD is because their limited parameters can only handle so much variation before becoming overwhelmed. They end up simplifying or ignoring rare details in the data, details that are crucial for producing accurate, creative outputs. On the flip side, the biggest of the large language models like ChatGPT can store nuanced data of enormous data sets, ensuring that these rarer patterns survive, but only for a little bit longer longer than their smaller counterparts. That being said, expanding on LLMs like that would come with its own complexities. You'd have to wonder at what point a model would get too big. See, the tricky thing is model decline has to be tackled from two different perspectives, the size of the model and how the model is trained. There are a lot of concerns out there, and rightfully so, about the industry's ability or even their willingness to overcome this problem. This sort of run until we hit a wall mentality has been something we've seen before out of tech and AI more specifically, where the industry has to take a moment to pause after realizing it can't continue on the way it has been. We know these periods as AI winters, and our current go-to for model design and training has been directly shaped by the last AI winter. You can check out this video on Microsoft's Tay to see exactly what caused this, but in short, it was the realization that real-time updating systems were not going to be viable to roll out to the public. AI is a field of two steps forward and one step back, and model collapse may be the thing that makes the industry take that step back again. 
So to be honest, I think if this were to happen again, the modern AI winter would be rather bland, as current providers gain very little from shutting off their services entirely. Okay, we have spent enough time inside today, let's head back out to the campfire. We've discovered the perfect recipe to keep our AI going almost endlessly. You'd think that tech giants would be lining up to fix it, yet oddly enough, they're all holding back. If you're asking why, then first, let's talk money, because when it comes to big tech, it always circles back to cash. AI-generated data is essentially free. A robot doesn't charge overtime when asked to write one more blog post or craft yet another digital portrait. So being able to take parts of your conversation and feed it back into the model, well, that doesn't really cost anything outside of the initial investment. On the other hand, fresh real-world data, that costs some serious dough. At the end of the day, it's not just money, it is strategic. Why share or push for a public solution when quietly holding your data close to your chest ensures that your AI remains top dog for a little longer? It's like that friend who won't share the secret family recipe. Annoying to you, but great for them. And the AI market has shown early on this year with the release of DeepSeek that those playbooks aren't as secret as Google, OpenAI, and others would like. Remember, in their own words, there is no moat. Perhaps most importantly, there is this sneaky comfort of good enough. If the AI-generated content floating around today is decent enough for the lion's share of enterprise users, big tech may wonder why invest heavily to fight something like MAD when that seems like tomorrow's problem. And to be blunt, good enough doesn't just mean for the provider, but also for the enterprise-based customer. I can't tell you how many companies using out-of-the-box LLMs in the space I've interviewed at trade shows who, when asked how they could guarantee quality of service with model declination, simply shrug and say, we can't. As long as the campfire still burns brightly enough for users not to notice the occasional flicker, there's no rush to add fresh logs or improve the recipe. It's like ignoring a minor roof leak because, hey, a bucket catches the drips just fine for now. That fire, though, doesn't have to dim. We've got logs and matches handy. The solutions are clear, tested, and proven. The real challenge isn't knowing what to do, it's finding the corporate stones and wallet to actually do it. My goblin brain theory here is that that if anything, when people talk about AI taking over the world or hitting AGI, this is what will really put that off. Or at least delay it a little bit longer. See, model decline hitting that positive tipping point is going to be a huge moment for the field, and in terms of discussing the singularity, it is one of those things that aims at setting us up for that monumental shift. Well, folks, I do think that's going to be all from me today. Uh, join me next time where we're going to be making some hot fixes to that 2016 Divergent Reality patch. See ya, nerds.